What's up everyone, Ronix from Ronix Photographer and today welcome to complete another retouching tutorial on this channel and this tutorial is about skin retouching and I'm going to be taking you guys step by step and it's going to be relatively a more slower video compared to the videos I've been uploading on this channel I've been getting, I've been getting feedback about the speed in which I talk and sometimes uh, most people tend not to understand or get everything clearly so uh, this tutorial is for you guys and i'm going to be taking this step by step and obviously that is going to make this tutorial a relatively long tutorial and if at all you don't have enough time to watch this tutorial you can just save it and you can watch it later and let's kick in and we start retouching this and we're going to be using the amazing frequency separation technique of skin retouching whereby we are going to be uh, using the global uh sorry we're going to be using the mixer brush tool uh, to blend the uneven skin tones and we are going to further fi fine tune the image then also we're going to be doing some little bit of global dodging and burning for this image so let's first kick in and first uh, see the settings i use i usually get uh questions about the camera settings i use uh basically this image was taken using a 5D Mark III Canon and it was taken at f4 at 1 out of 640th of a second this is the shutter speed at ISO 100 and I used a Canon 70 to 200 and I shot this image at 115mm so basically that is the settings I use and the white balance I preferred a warm kind of image that's why i went in for around 5000 that's the white balance i shot this image in so as usual we start by doing the and this is a raw image we start by uh, doing the raw processing in camera raw so i'm using camera raw 9.9 .9 and uh, this version was for 2017 and if at all you have a newer version you can still find these options though maybe they change them somehow a little bit so as usual let's kick in i'll start by pulling down the highlights because uh, the highlights were kind of so blown out in this image and before we can do that let me let me reset this okay before we can do that let's uh, let's first of all do the color grading i usually do my color grading this is the first step i do I use when I'm doing my color grading in camera raw so I just come right here to camera calibration and if at all you don't have this for a newer versions camera calibration is around uh, this very area right here you see the option so you're going to calibrate this image and in order to calibrate your image you have first of all know the picture profile you shot the image in so usually I shoot my images in Adobe landscape so just come to come up under camera profile then look for the picture style so you can see now this is how I was looking at my image initially on my camera screen and one thing I noticed about uh, this landscape uh, it adds so much tint in your images and adds so much red so you have to cool it down in most of the cases so we're going to come back to our right here to our basic panel and first of all knock down the highlights like i said before then i have to also knock down the whites a little bit for this very image because i want to regain the highlights a little bit more so i'm going to pull it down and i'm going to come to my blacks because i want to add contrast I think around negative 27 will do for this very image then I'm going to pump up my contrast to around 7 and like I said uh, landscape usually has too much tint or magentas or reds so we're going to uh, try to reduce on that by shifting the tint towards the green so let's go right there uh, we're going to go in for around negative negative nine will do for this image 
and let's put a little bit of clarity around five i think this is fine and let's pump up our shadows a little bit and what i noticed you know if you pull your shadows all the way up you lose so much detail so make sure you don't pull the shadows all the way so i think we are done with this step and you can see i've already gotten back the colors so basically this is more i like my color grading step for all my portraits in camera row so we're going to open this image into our photoshop and as the image opens up uh, guys if you haven't subscribed and you're watching don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button on this video so this uh this is an image of a friend of mine she's called birth and i'm going to put the her instagram link in the description of this video so that you guys can check out or maybe follow her so usually i prefer to first of all crop my image before retouching and i prefer to crop my images in a ratio of four to five or, or eight by ten because I want the image to fit in the full Instagram screen. Yeah, so get this and I'm going to crop it. Then crop it all the way. I think here we are fine. So let me straighten it up a little bit because of this backside so let me just click enter i think this is fine for the image so let's zoom in too so like i said we are first of all going to blend the uneven skin tones and before we can do that let's first uh, understand frequency separation basically frequency separation is a skin retouching technique though some people prefer to use it maybe for retouching fabrics or anything but for this tutorial Frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that first of all divides the image into the colors and the textures. It gets the colors or skin tones because skin tones are kind of part of color and puts them on one layer. Then it also helps us get the textures and puts them on a different layer. So if at all we combine the two layers, we get the image like it was before so in order to understand that let's kick in and we first of all create the two layers so we're going to start by duplicating the background layer twice so just drag and drop here or you can just click ctrl or command j yeah ctrl j or command j twice so we're going to name this remember the skin tones or the colors are usually below below the te textures yeah so we're going to name this middle layer because it is uh, below the top layer you will name it a uh, low frequency or some people call it the color layer then you're going to name the top layer high frequency yeah high frequency or some people prefer to call it uh, the texture layer sorry so some people call it the texture layer. So these two layers, when you combine them, after creating the frequency separation group, we must be able to get the image uh, like it appears in the background. So first of all, start by turning off uh, the texture or high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. Then for this step, you are going to uh, blur out or remove textures from this layer so that you can only remain with the colors or the skin tones on this layer and in order to do that come to filter then come to blur then come to gaussian blur so when you come to gaussian blur uh, you get this little dialog box right here so uh, you have to zoom out and look for the area that has uh, more skin textures than uh, the rest of uh, the skin so i'll go in for this particular area so we have to move this slider until we see a uh, less of the skin textures but you can still notice uh, the model's facial structures so move this slider and you have to do it really really nice and carefully until you're seeing less of the skin textures uh, for the image so 
I think I can still see a little bit of skin texture. So I think at six, uh, we can see less of the skin textures. So just come and click OK. Then come to the high frequency or texture layer. You can see for this layer, we only have uh, the colors and the skin tones, and we can see less of the skin texture. So for this layer, we're going to only maintain the skin textures for the high frequency layer. So select it and activate it by clicking on this eye icon. Then come right here to image and come to apply image. So when you come to apply image, this is how your image will turn out to be. So you shouldn't be worried or maybe you have made a mistake. No, this is how it turns out to be because the blending is in multiply. So what we are going to do right now, we are going to subtract uh, our textures from the low frequency layer. So come and now select low frequency. Then come to the blending. Remember I said you are going to be subtracting uh, the textures from the low frequency or color layer. So come to the blending and look for what? Subtract. So when you click on subtract, you may not get your image looking like this. Reason being, uh, you have to first of all put the scale to and offset 128. Now the reason for this is uh, we have to get uh, a 50% grace. So uh, it is more of 256 uh, divided by the median of 256, you get 128. So make sure you put the opacity at 100, the scale at 2 and offset 128 and you get uh, this gray kind of layer. And when you try to zoom into this layer, you'll only see that this layer is lacking colors, but the textures are there. So just come and click OK. Make sure the preview is check, checked or marked. So click OK. Then come to the blending and change it from normal and uh, change it to a linear light. So when you change it to linear light, uh, you'll get back the image the way it was. So we are going to put these two in a group. Select the two layers by clicking Ctrl and clicking on the both layers. Then you can click Ctrl or Command G. Yeah, Ctrl or Command G. Or you can just select, make sure they are selected and drag them and drop them to this group like icon. So come right here and we are going to name this for purposes of uh, uniformity. You're going to name it frequency separation. So like I said, uh, your group shouldn't be different from the background image. So let's turn this on and off. You can see there is no difference between uh, the background image and the frequency separation group. So meaning we have su successfully uh, conducted our frequency separation for this very image. So we're going to open this frequency separation group and select the high frequency or texture layer then first of all we are going to come to the adjustments and we are going to create a black and white adjustment so look for black and white and click on it so the reason for doing this is because we want to look and uh, look for and determine those areas uh, that don't have uh, skin tones that are blending so we are going to get the mixer brush tool and like in painting, we are going to start painting over the skin tones and blending them so that we can have a perfect or nice transitions between the colors and the skin tones for the image. So come to the red channel and drag it all the way towards your left to uh, darken. And when you do this, uh, you'll get to see all those areas that don't have a blending transitions here in the skin tones you can see this we have like a patch right here in this highlight so we have to get rid of that then we have some dark darkness here in the mid tones so we are just going to be blending uh, these uneven skin tones and make sure that like they are giving us some sort of smooth transitions uh, within uh, the skin tones so come to the low frequency or color layer. Remember, we're only going to be dealing with the low frequency or the color layer because we're dealing with the colors or the skin tones for our model. So come to, under your brushes, just right click and look for uh, your mixer brush tool. So 
mine, I just decided to put it out. This is my mixer brush tool. And if at all you don't have it there, just right click under your brushes. And you can get your mixer brush tool. So remember, we have to now set the mixer brush tool so that we can have the best brush that is going to retain skin textures for our image. So come right here and uh, click right here and make sure it is a clean brush and make sure this right here is selected because we want the brush to clean itself after each and every stroke yeah like photoshop is informing us right here it's like when you're painting and you have every time you have to apply a different color you have to clean or dip your brush in maybe water or any cleaning substance so that the other color you're going to apply on your painting is not changed or affected so make sure the wetness is at nine percent and the reason for the wetness being this slow is because we want to retain the skin textures for this image and make sure the load is 75 the mix at 90 and the flow at 100 make sure sample all layers is not checked or selected make sure this box does not have a tick so because uh the reason for not putting a tick on this tiny box sample all layers because we want only deal with the color or the low frequency layer so we're going to start blending the unevenness in the skin tone so let me i'm going to zoom in a little bit so to increase your brush size you have to use the left and uh, you have to use the left and the right brackets on the keyboard so this is our mixer brush tool so this is how you do increase uh, your mixer brush tool so let's start uh, blending the unevenness uh, in the skin tones and make sure when you're doing this don't uh, mi over mix a particular area for too long because it is going to double the wetness being applied on that particular area and remember we want to uh, retain uh, the skin textures for that particular area we are trying to uh, blend so remember we want to get rid of uh, this this kind of part I'm sorry about uh, the sound of my PC I know it is really really annoying and I really don't know how I can go about that so remember we want to get rid of a patch that was uh, kind of on uh, our models for our head. So you can see, and when you're doing this, make sure you mix the highlights alone, the mid-tones alone, and the shadows alone. So let's turn off the black and white or our help layer, and we see the before and after for the frequency separation. So that's the before, after, before, after. You can see as uh, the magic of the mixer brush tool. So we are going to uh, continue doing this for the rest of our image. So let's uh, continue blending. So you can turn this on again and make sure you're on your low frequency. Then just continue uh, blending uh, those transitions. And whatever you see a shadow or highlight when, where it is not supposed to do, just make sure you just blend that place instantly so i don't know if you guys will bear with my this noise and i just don't know how i can stop it because i'm in the middle of the tutorial so and i don't know why it's doing this to me at this very moment so we are just are blending uh, the transitions within uh, the skin tones and if at all you feel you can't see a particular area right just come and double click right here and you can just brighten a little bit and continue mixing and blending make sure after doing that select your low frequency make sure it is selected and just continue mixing or blending uh, every area you feel doesn't have smooth transitions you can see i'm mixing the highlights alone and when I come to the mid tones, I mix, I mix, sorry, I mix them alone. And when I come to the shadows, I make also make sure that I do uh, mix them alone. So 
let's come to the nose area you can see right here on the bridge and all the sides of the nose we have that and just blend that area really nice and well so let me reduce this let me just reduce that and I work on these tiniest parts of uh, the model's nose I think we are done uh, with the face or maybe we can just work a little bit down so you can turn this off and you can as well work without it and you shouldn't worry if at all uh, you miss out on particular areas because we are going to fine tune uh, this image a little bit more so you can see the before and after so far and it has even dealt away with uh, most of the blemishes so we are going to have less work to do when you are removing the pimples or the blemishes from uh, the model's face so we are going to be working on this chest area so turn this on and now we are going to increase on the size of uh, the brush and let's do this quick because I'm tired of uh, the sounds made uh, by a PC every time I'm trying to increase or decrease on my brush tool so let me just get a bigger brush and just blend these areas you can see I'm mixing the shadows alone so I have mittens see I'm blending them alone so basically that is what I'm doing for this very very Im image and if at all you love this tutorial and you're learning something don't forget to like or subscribe to this channel because uh, this is really information that is going to transform uh, your retouching at the end of the day so just help us by supporting this channel because uh, we do invest so so much time to create content to help yeah we are like sharing knowledge and you know learning doesn't and we are also learning so let's uh, blame the hand of the model because I feel like I'm doing so much talking and less of uh, the working so let me also work on the hands of our model so let's come this side and just uh, blame this side too So let's see our progress keep on checking on your progress don't be taken up by the retouching so let's see before and after you can see uh, the difference it has already made to this image so after doing that you can just come and delete the black and white layer drag it to the trash can and now we are going to fine tune the image and we're going to be using the lasso tool method so just come and select your lasso tool. Make sure your feathering is changed one because we want a fine selection. And anti-alias is selected too. So we are going to start fine-tuning the image. Make sure you're still on your low frequency layer. So zoom in to the image. And now start. Uh, just select the area you feel has more skin tones no skin textures than the rest of the skin of our model just make sure you just select that then come to filter and come to blur and come back to Gaussian blur so now we are like fine-tuning the image and like I said before and I have always said in my tutorials uh, I think when you do multiply the radius we use when you are creating the frequency separation group by three yeah and add two to that value you get the best skin textures if at all you're not sure with uh, moving this slider yeah you get the best skin textures for your retouching so you multiply six by three uh, that is 18 then add two or three to that value so 6 times 3 that is 18 then add 2 to 18 to get 20 so when you just put 20 right here 
you can see the skin texture is really really fine and refined and it is really really nice so that is just a trick I'm sharing so for those that don't would not want to go in that just I start by moving this slide it until you see that the skin texture is uh, the best for you you can see at around 20 we have uh, the best skin texture for the image so just come and click ok so right now we're going to be uh, applying this effect on the rest of uh, the models face so come right here between the eyebrows so right click i'm not going to be using shortcuts because i want you guys to follow and even a beginner to follow along and understand the retouching process so just apply the effect so make sure you select according to the shape of that particular area you want to apply the effect so just right click and click on gaussian blur so you can see the shapes i'm making apply the Gaussian blur come right here right click and apply the Gaussian blur and come right here right click and apply the Gaussian blur so it's just going to come right here on the upper lip right click apply the Gaussian blur and just come right here right click and apply the Gaussian but I think you guys can understand what I'm doing yeah it is just really really nice and easy and it will give you like the best uh, results for your retouching and yeah like I said this is going to be a kind of lengthy retouching tutorial and I think this is fine but don't forget this no side and like i said i've always seen so many people that do frequency separation and when it comes to the nose area they kind of apply so much yeah and they tend to lose out on this beautiful highlight of the nose so like you have seen i've not applied anything yet right here so if at all you feel like you you want to apply so right click apply the Gaussian blur and if at all you feel the effect is too much for your liking come and click shift ctrl f yeah shift ctrl f and I reduce on the effect or opacity of that very area so like I said just come and I reduce on that effect so I just don't want to lose out on my highlight that's why I have left it so you can see uh, our beautiful image so this is the before after before after you can see how beautiful it has turned out to be with just simple simple steps so what we are going to do right now we can still come and apply our gaussian blur on the rest of the parts of uh, the body but only if it is too much shift ctrl f sorry and apply the effect and you can actually fade it out so this is how you do your skin retouching so what you're going to do right now we're going to be removing removing the pimples and the blemishes before we can do the global dodging and burning for the image so remember the pimples are part of skin textures for the image make sure the high frequency layer or texture layer is selected then come and select your clone stamp tool make sure it is normal opacity 100 flow 100 and uh, aligned is checked and you're sampling on your current layer because you are only working on the high frequency or texture layer so for setting your clone stamp tool normal the mode opacity 100 flow 100 make sure aligned is checked and we are working on the current layer make sure you drop down and select current layer because we are working with the high frequency or the texture layer so we are going to zoom into the image yeah and now we are dealing with the blemishes and since this is a uh, high end uh, we want to first of all 
work with these pimples and blemishes when you have totally zoomed into uh, the image. So let's uh, work with this and get done. And how this clone stamp tool works, I'm sorry I didn't mention this. Uh, you sample from a clean air by holding down the alternate button and click on the clean area. Then paint over or dab over the blemish you, you want to uh, remove. So sample from a clean area, click out and click on the that clean area and just paint over uh, the pimple or the blemish you want to eliminate or get rid of. So basically uh, that is how you do remove uh, the pimples or uh, the blemishes from uh, your image so let's do this you can do this uh, just take your time with this uh, very step because uh, it is this that is going to determine you or grade you as a retoucher you can see how beautiful the image is now turning out to be when uh, we clear or clean or remove uh, the blemishes from it so you can see we had some kind of dirtiness right there so let's do this and you can really take your time while uh, removing these skin imperfections from your image so let's see the progress so you can see i'm um, keep i uh, keep on I keep on uh, zooming in and out because I want to see uh, my progress really, really nice and well. So I think the model really had a flawless or nice skin. So you can see that. So let's come right down to uh, the chin area and I will try to clean uh, that up. Let's just clean up here and the lip area. So alternate clean uh, sample from a clean area and just paint alternate click and dab over the blemish so that is basically how we use the clone stamp tool and uh, it is really effective uh, when you're removing a blemish especially using trick and separation because uh, you do it yourself and you sample from a clean area yourself and you don't let photoshop do that for you so basically that is how we use the clone stamp tool so let's just clean up uh, this particular area i think this is really really nice and fine so if at all you would like to do a little bit of more cleaning up you can just come right here sample from this clean area and just um, and paint over but I think this is fine so let's uh, clean up uh, the eyes because I see some sort of darkness or those this tiny white stuff on the eyes so let's try and see if at all we can just clean them up I don't think that is doing for us a really nice job so I think we can just do that later on. I think this is fine. So right now we're going to be doing uh, the global dodging and burning to uh, bring back the shape or the dimension to the image. And in order to do that, we are going to be using uh, curves adjustment layers uh, because global dodging and burning is basically more of skin sculpting. We'll be bringing back the highlights and the shadows for the image that may have been are lost when we are doing the frequency separation so come right here and select curves so we dodge the highlights because dodging enhances the highlights and we burn the shadows because burning enhances the shadows for our portrait so make a midpoint and right now move it up slightly close that uh, we're going to hide this effect make sure this mask is selected right here and click ctrl or command i to hide the effect so remember when we are brightening we dodge the highlight so we're going to name this uh, dodge and you're going to come back 
to the curves same procedure and make a midpoint and now we are going to uh, darken make sure a mask is still selected click ctrl or command i to invert or hide that effect so we are going to name this burn so we're going to put these two in a group ctrl select the two and put them in a group ctrl or command g so we're going to name this dodge and burn i'm going to name this d and b so basically that is it so we're going to select the burn layer and come right down and create a black and white layer like we did for frequency separation we are going to first of all darken this because we want to see uh, where the shadows were and the highlights so get your brush tool make sure our opacity is what a uh, nine percent and the flow 100 it is a normal round brush so make sure white is in on the foreground because you're going to be revealing what we hid on a black mask remember white reveals and black hides so basically that is uh, what we mean by uh painting using white on black so remember white review so we want to review the effect first of all on the burn layer so make sure you select the burn layer so remember we want to uh, reveal this effect so get white on top this is a white brush and uh, we're going to paint over that so make sure you hide you hide uh, the frequency separation group because we want to see where the highlights and the shadows were initially for this very very image so come and start painting over at uh, those particular areas so you can just come and dab over those areas and make sure you just don't overdo it because it's going to mess up your overall image i think that is fine and now let's come and enhance uh, the cheekbones of our model i think that is fine too so right now what we are going to do we are going to start dodging remember we are going to be dodging enhances the high the highlights so just a uh, paint over every area you feel should have had a highlight i think that is fine and now just come right on the chest area and we are going to enhance uh the chest bones yeah or the collar bones so let's turn this off turn on the frequency separation and let's say before and after before after you can see the difference it has made it is not really really much but it is uh, right there you can see i don't know if you guys can see it yeah and if at all it is not there you can even double the effect by clicking ctrl j and uh, doubling that effect on that particular area so now you can see how it has turned out to be so that's the before after before after so basically that is how we do our global dodging and burning so we can delete the black and white layer and if at all you feel your burning is too much just select it and reduce on its individual opacity i think that is fine so after doing the global dodging and burning uh, we are going to uh, first of all do the uh, cleaning up of this eye area by creating a stamp visible layer by uh, clicking shift ctrl alternate e on the keyboard shift ctrl alt e on the keyboard and we're going to duplicate that layer by clicking ctrl j this time around we are going to get the spot healing brush tool uh, zoom into uh, that area we want to clean up reduce on the brush uh, and just dab over those areas that have those whitish uh, kind of substances uh, to get rid of them because this is more of uh, a beauty portrait so make sure you just dab over those areas that have those tiny tiny white substances uh, because we were we are kind of refining our portrait and we want the best and you can just come and clean up uh, the hair area too yeah just come and just dab over 
So I think we are done cleaning up that area. You can see the before and the after, before, after. So right now we're going to be doing the eye whitening for the image and it is the same method you have to use for the teeth whitening. So I'm going to come back to filter and come to camera row filter and when you come to camera row filter what you have to do is uh, zoom into the area you want to do the eye whitening on and get your adjustment brush or you can just click K on the keyboard make sure temperature is at negative 29 the tint is at mega uh, 71 towards the pink side or the magenta side and make sure the highlight is at 5 the white is at 4 remember we are removing color from the white area of the eye so we have to turn down the saturation down to negative 74 and just come and paint over uh, the white area of the eye so make sure you just remain within the borders or the boundaries of uh, the white area of the eye to do uh, your eye whitening and this is going to upgrade your photography a level or retouching skills uh, by a very very big margin so you should learn this process of eye whitening so you can see we are done doing the eye whitening and when you're doing this make sure you don't paint over this red side or the corner of the eye because I uh, don't want the eyes to look unnatural so this is how you do it so just click OK so that is how we do the eye whitening for the image. So this is the before. After you can see the eyes have really, really turned out to be nice and beautiful. So we are going to be doing some little bit of enhancing our blacks in the image. Come right here and click on selective color. And you want to enhance the darks or the blacks for the image. Click on blacks and come to the black channel in the blacks. And just up pump it up a little bit. I think this is really really fine then I feel like the image still has magenta so I'm going to come back to selective color and come to the red channel because I feel like there is so much magenta in my reds and I'm going to turn down my magentas yeah from my reds uh, to around negative 10 then I'm going to enhance the blacks in my reds to around 3. So I think this is really, really fine for me. And you can continue color grading the way you feel like. But this is uh, how we do skin retouching using frequency separation. And remember, we use the mixer brush tool. Then we went ahead to enhance our retouching by using our lasso tool and the Gaussian blur method then we also did global dodging and burning then we did the eye whitening and we did some little bit more of uh, color grading for the image so this was the image initially uh, before and this is the after before after you can see we have really done a nice and beautiful job so if at all love this story don't forget to like or drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another tutorial on this channel and stay safe.